it doesn't look like anything that we see in Vermont for sure. I would agree. Such a long way down too. Think of all the Instagrammers that have fallen off the slide. <laughs> That's why I have to have that yellow paint. Yep. So this is Chimney Rock here and we didn't know there was an RV park right in front of it. Look at all these empty spaces. Looks pretty basic, but wow, what a view, right? So as you can see, this visitor center has a very sizable parking lot. And unless it's massively crowded, I do think there's room behind me for a larger RV and even a toad as this one has. So I think this is a very nice large parking lot. Yep, and you can see from perspective, there's the visitor center. And there's Chimney Rock. And there's Chimney Rock. And the love truck. So the significance of Chimney Rock is that really back then along these trails, and the trails are indicated by the Oregon Trail, the Mormon Trail, California Trail, and the Pony Express, there were no cities or anything. So people had to mark landmarks to route their progress. And they would have things like the Platte River and Devil's Gate, etc. But one of the big ones was Chimney Rocks, and one of the most documented ones. So that's kind of why we wanted to check this out. So on their trails, they had guidebooks that would recommend them stacking stuff inside of each other like we do in the Airstream to save space. And they would also give a recommended amount of stores to bring as well on their trips. Yeah, like 500 pounds of flour. Um, a lot of the same staples we bring, except we have beer. And we have less of it because we have access to places to buy things along the way. All right, this is a fun little activity. You pick your items from the wall here and you load up your wagon and see how heavy you can make it and how much stuff you can put into it. This is not an activity that I would be too great on because I'm thinking it's too much like loading up the Airstream. Right? Yeah, it's too much work. It's too much work, but for, <laughs> for a kid or something, that would be fun. So we're outside here at Chimney Rock and it is a really beautiful site. But the interesting thing is that it's really gotten a lot shorter than it was like 100 or so years ago in that the erosion, lightning, wind, all that stuff has been reducing the tip from about 300 feet down to what it is now, which is a little bit less than that. So, um, but it must have been a very welcome sight for those traveling from the east, from St. Louis, from St. Joseph, places like that in Missouri, to realize that they're getting probably to the more difficult part of their journey as they start to face the Rocky Mountains in a short time. And because it's sort of a, a standout landmark, I was able to see it about four miles away before we even yes. got here. So it really does stand out in the distance. Yep, the visitor center here is $8 per person, which we always like to pay to help support attractions such as this. David, please check it on the map. So Rich is gonna get some drone shots. We did ask permission first, and they said yes. So we're gonna see what we can get. Maximum flight altitude reached. So here at the Riverside Campground, they actually come by every day and offer free firewood. How many campgrounds do you know that offers free firewood? As much as you want, right? Absolutely. And my wee tour chopped it up and split it up real nice. Perfect. And if you're wondering what a wee tour is, you can check out this video here where I go ahead and demonstrate this awesome firewood splitting tool. All right, we're here at Scott's Bluff, Nebraska. And one of the things that we always do is we use this Reader's Digest um, cutouts that we have. And whenever we're in a new state, we look to see what that official state food is. is yeah. And we looked at Nebraska and it's something called a Runza. And we bought two. And so what we're gonna do, except Cindy's gonna hold up the bag so that you can see the Runza sign. All about filming. <laughs> And we're going to go ahead and try these things out, and then we're going to try and replicate it. If it's good. 
if it's good and if Cindy can replicate it and make it better. Yes. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, move forward with our Runza. Absolutely. So we're gonna open this Runza and see what we've got. I'm kind of excited about it. It smells really, really good. So it looks like, almost like a whole bun. Like they stuffed it in there. I'm gonna see how they put it in there. Okay, so it's, if you look at it, and it looks almost like a, a hoagie style bun. So looks like a stuffed hoagie style bun. Let's give it a split and see what it looks like. So it looks like really finely minced ground beef. It's supposed to have cabbage and some sort of special spice. So, hmm. Obviously the best runza you've ever had. It's the best runza I've ever had, but it's only, it's the only runza I've ever had. I don't really taste the cabbage. The bread is very soft and it's sort of toasted on the outside. So I'm trying to determine what the spice is and it's eluding me, but it, I might get to it later if I have another bite. So we're going to continue it down the road on this one and see how we like it. So I am recreating the Runzas today and I'm doing it with whatever I have in the Airstream and so it's not going to be a beef Runza, it's going to be a bean Runza because that's basically all I had. So and I'm also recreating the dough the best I can with bread flour, I had no eggs so I'm substituting shortening so I'm doing a whole lot of things to recreate the Runza but we'll see how they turn out. It's kind of a Cindy Runza then. Absolutely. Because we're pretty low on provisions because we're provisioning tomorrow. Yes. So the first thing we're going to do with the runs is I've already had the dough made. I already had the filling made. And so I'm going to preheat the oven to 375. And I just wanted to talk about the Furion oven because I just wanted to do an update on some tips that I learned at International about how to light the oven. So let's get started. So you put it on the light position and you open the oven. And there's also an angle where you can see the lighter. So, and also note, watch this. So look, it looks like I have it on the propane, but watch, I really don't. And so we have to make sure it goes in that extra quarter of an inch. So that was a good tip. So we're gonna try this lighter and it lit immediately. And I could see the reflection of the pilot light right there. I'm not sure, oh yeah, I can. Well, so okay. you have to make sure you push it in that extra little bit to make sure the gas is going. And I'm just going to watch it as I release slowly and the pilot's lit. So it's now as easy as that. So we're just going to crank that up to 375 and you can watch it go. So we're going to go ahead and try Cindy's Runza. This is a vegetarian Runza. And it just goes to prove you can do it with whatever you want. You don't need a full blown meat. I'm going to try it first without the salsa. Okay. Mm. Mm. Is it good? Mm -hmm. The dough is perfect. The beans provide all the cabbage. Very great spice. Very good flavor on the inside. Let's go ahead and try it with some of the green salsa. And let's turn this into a Mexican dish. But what's good about it is a vegetarian. If you like a vegetarian dish, this is great for you. Better or worse? I'd say that the green salsa is a little too hot for this. Okay. And it overwhelms the runza. Okay. Um, so I would not recommend the green salsa. The runza by itself is good, but it's overall excellent. Good job, C. Yay. So one of our favorite things, as we've said before, is packing our little lunch mm -hmm. and having it in a national park. 
Absolutely, and you can find ones with great views like this. It's even better. Yeah, we're a little backlit. I get that, but man, looking back around what we can see around all and the look way. At what we can, we'll show it right here. What we're looking at. It's just and beautiful. you can see what we're looking in the back. Mm -hmm. We've got our little. Uh, I collect these. The little Scotts Bluff thing. And admission is free here. Yes, and there is oversized and RV parking. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And let's there's a driving trail that we're going to take, and there's a museum and some restrooms. All right, let's hit lunch, mm -hmm. and we'll hit Scott's Bluff. Should be fun. So it's interesting, this road that's going up to the top of the bluff has a bunch of tunnels. Take it slow. Yeah, I'll take it slow. I think we'll have enough, uh, we'll have enough room, though. Yeah, this is why they don't want oversized vehicles on this uh, road here. Interesting. Yeah, this road is not for towing yeah. or an We saw a fifth wheel unhitching in the parking lot. We're like, why is he unhitching? Well, yeah. now we know. Yep. He's not taking his fifth wheel up here. Nope. This reminds me a little bit of Big Ben, but I thought Big Ben was a little more red rock. This more is like sand colored. This is quite the road. We're gonna go ahead and do the North Overlook Trail. I think that's pretty unusual though for national parks and monuments is that they allow pets on a leash. Ready hi see yep. for hiking? We're gonna give it a shot. Okay, so are you able to see the uh, Airstream in our campground from here? Just barely. So it's about right there, right across the river. Let's see, there it's the campground. Yeah, I can see the truck. Our neighbor's truck, I mean. Neighbor's truck, yeah. And we're, it's, we may be able to get a different vantage view, but yeah, the, our neighbor's uh, camper kind of blocks ours. Yep. But it's pretty close. It's only right down the way there. So there's the town of Scott's Bluff, obviously. Yep. So they talk about how these bluffs and everything is eroding, very similar to what formed Chimney Rock. But you can see that post right there in the back that Cindy will pan off to. They say in 1933, the top of that post was level with the rock. And you can see how much it's eroded all the way down in just about 90 years. Wow, it's sand. Isn't that amazing how soft that rock is? Well, you can see it, it's, it comes off on my hands. That's why it's eroding so quickly, huh? Well, I or think parts of it. Yeah, it's just gonna blow away. What do you think, see? That's How's pretty, the views up here? Pretty excellent. Let's just say that hogback does not match this. No, it would be so sweet to see some serious weather coming in here. Yes, it's so clear today. This is the perfect day to see this. Yep. Yesterday would have been a little cloudy. Yep. Yep, and for all those people that complain about not having national parks and dogs, well, that's why. Somebody didn't pick up their mess. Can't have nice things. So it's always interesting to be able to see a long way and see rain in the distance. Yeah, those rain bands coming down like that. Mm -hmm. We don't know if they're headed our way, but I think the weather might be worth watching. All right, well, there you have it, Kansas and Nebraska. And as always, I feel like we've only scratched the surface. There's so much more to see, there's there so is. much more to do. There is. But behind us is west. west. Yes, and, and we're, we're gonna, gonna continue our journey west. Yes, we are. Tomorrow we'll be hitting a BLM campground, we think, for the first time ever. And we'll hit our next new state. Wyoming, where our Airstream Rally will eventually be held. Mm -hmm. All right, so if you like this video, give us a big thumbs up. And if you think we've earned a subscription, click to subscribe. And comment below if you went through Kansas or Nebraska and what you like the best. Because we come out with Airstream and RV related videos just like this one every Tuesday. Thanks for watching.